Welcome back everyone to another video. We have another layout of things to try on the bench and we're back with the Snapmaker Artisan setting it up to do some of the upcoming projects. We've got a lot of work to do on it. But the biggest thing I need to do with this machine first is use better materials like production level materials. Now, for anyone who's in the 3D print space, as you know, you know you're normally using like PLA filament, ABS filament. It's pretty good. It's not the best material to use, though. It has issues with heat deflection. If you leave it in the sun or expose it to a bit of heat, it'll tend to warp and distort and lose its tolerances. It has issues with durability, um, brittleness. There's all sorts of things that come into it depending on how you treat the materials. And this is where we enter the world of Mark Forged. And uh, there's a couple other brands out there, but these are like production engineering materials that are designed to hold up to abuse and just produce items that you can use in the real world. So we have two filaments to try here. We have Mark Forged Onyx, which is sort of their based material, which is like a carbon nylon composite material. Uh, it's very good stuff. I've used it quite extensively and it has always done, I've been really impressed with the surface finish and the durability of it. We also have nylon white, uh, which I got just to try because I do need to do some stuff with pure nylon as well. So two filaments here we're going to try at about $400 between the two of them. They're not cheap materials and you need to look after them which is why we also have these dry boxes, which are airtight boxes to store the filament and feed them out through a uh, Bowden tube straight into the extruder. So these dry boxes are quite important. This filament is very hydroscopic. It sucks up moisture like there's no tomorrow and it gets ruined very quickly in open air. So you can't just run it on a spool sitting in the open. Uh, we also have some nozzles here from our Mark Forge machine, which should fit the Snapmaker, but that'll be in an upcoming video where we try some different hardened nozzles with this filament and see how it goes. Um, the carbon filament is very abrasive and it destroys the hot end nozzles very quickly. Uh, so we can't use the stock Snapmaker nozzles for very long if this happens to work at all, which we don't know yet. So basically, I'm going to load the filaments into these dry boxes, uh, get them hooked up with a Bowden tube to the Artisan, get it fed in, and we're going to just see what the results are. I'm not going to time lapse putting the filament in because that's pretty standard, but let's go through the results of these filaments and see if we can actually make Mark Forged filament work in a non Mark Forged machine. Will this work? I have no idea, but let's find out. Okay, so I'm running the uh, hot end at about 250 degrees as a starting point. I don't know what is the recommended temperature for nylon. Something in that ballpark I think should work. Uh, it is extruding perfectly. Got purged out all the black PLA that was in there and it's feeding really nicely. So basically I've got the uh, dry boxes sitting up on this uh, plank single Bowden tube, no joins or anything, feeding straight down from the dry box into the enclosure and then feeding down straight into the left extruder. And everything is looking good at the moment. Now we need to see if we can make this stuff stick to the bed and if it will actually print reliably. So I'm going to do a bit of testing, uh, trying to play around with some settings and we will come back and I'll give you some results for the uh, Mark Forged white nylon. Alrighty, so the nylon went pretty well. Um, I just started off on the stock lube and nylon profile set the hot end to 250 degrees and the bed to 50 degrees and was just trying it out so 100 percent fan cooling for the part and overall for a first print it went really well there is however a bit of a sort of an elephant's foot at the bottom as it's sort of either squashed down or, or pushed out on the bed 
Now I know for a fact Mark Forge machines don't have a heated bed, so this could be part of that, or there could be other things at play, and more tweaking is required. But for first print, that went really well. So I decided to move on and try no parts cooling fan, which a few people recommended, and that did not go well. Uh, it basically started to collapse the wall, and the whole part basically started to deform here. So part cooling fan definitely seems to be needed. So I moved on to a 50% fan, splitting the difference, and I also changed it to the first layer where the, the cooling fan comes on instead of the second layer. That definitely improved the base, and it's not as pronounced on this bottom edge. And overall, the, the finish is pretty similar, maybe a little bit more deformation in the wall. Um, and the final print I did before moving on was 100% part cooling fan and the first layer is when the fan turns on. And this was overall very good. Um, quite impressed with it overall. It's not perfect. There is still a bit of um, sort of, you know, elephant's foot at the bottom with it sort of rolling outwards. And I need to look into that, but this is not like a deal breaker. It does work, it just needs tweaking. And the, the layer adhesion was much better using the cooling fan on the first layer for some reason. So I moved on and I decided to do a real world part just to see how it performed. And overall, it is quite good. There is a bit of lifting here, so that's gonna take some improvement. And the top surface finish needs improvement also, but this is without the ironing post-processing and I've tried that on other filaments and works quite well. I haven't tried it on this yet, so that should clean up this top surface. And if you're wondering about the geometry, like how, how accurate this part is, well, if I try to plug this in, it goes straight in. So, very good. No issues at all with the accuracy and the nylon gets a pass. I'm very happy with it. So now we're gonna move on to the onyx filament. I'm gonna load that in and we'll come back with the results for that. Okay, so the onyx material. This one has really blown my mind, to be honest. Um, the nylon, I would say overall, is a bit finicky. It's definitely delicate to work with, and it's very easy to upset it when it's printing. This uh, onyx filament is just really, really well behaved, and the print quality is excellent in a wide range of conditions, I've found. So if we look at that, that wall, it just, it's stunning. There's barely any layer lines. This is at point two layer lines. Um, and that top finish is just gorgeous. The bottom is excellent as well. And there's barely any deformation at the bottom. Uh, just a little bit of a lip there, not much. And it's just really, really good. I think it does need a little bit of a tweak with the extrusion. Oh, maybe not. No, so we're running it, um, this is a 20 mil test cube. So ever so slightly out of spec. Dimensionally quite accurate. Yeah, no, I'll give that a pass. Could tweak it a tiny bit and um, we're fine there. So I moved on uh, to an actual part print because I was so happy with that test cube. Uh, that was a uh, 50 degree bed temperature and a 270 degree hot end temperature. And I'll overlay some Lubin settings again, just for your reference, but you're gonna have to play around and mess around with it. So this is my first part that I did on it with basic settings. This is copying basically the nylon settings across because this is a nylon composite filament. So it's still turning on the cooling fan 100% at the first layer. 
and yeah, so basically the same deal. And it's printed quite well. There is some, you know, abnormalities in it. it, it does, it's not the best surface finish, I would say. The sides are quite good, but this is, uh, this could be better on top. So I moved on to the next step, which was uh, to turn on the ironing function, which basically drags the hot end around on the top to try and fill it in. This worked way better. And we're really starting to close in on what I'm looking for here. And I decided to take it one step further and I dropped the top layer to 0.3 millimeters instead of 0.4 for the line thickness. And that's closed up pretty much all the holes that were left. And I find the porosity or the holes that you get in the top is quite a problem with carbon filament. If I grab one of these old test prints that I did on the old machine uh, using the eSun CF filament, you can see the difference here. Like it, it can barely maintain any sort of fine detail. Um, the Mark Forged part, sorry, using the Mark Forged filament is just vastly superior. And I'm really impressed with it. This stuff is excellent. I uh, really want to keep using this in the machine with a hardened hot end. So we need to do some more tweaking, put in some hardened nozzles and see if we can improve this even further. Now, a couple of tweaks I do recommend if you decide to try this filament at some point is uh, the Mark Forge machines do a purge line before every print, which is a big, thick purging line to clean out the Bowden tube for printing. Now, the Snapmaker, I, I don't know if there's a G-code that could do a purge line, like a really thick one. So what I resorted to doing instead is I did a skirt, but I did it 15 uh, passes. So it's quite a big skirt that is laid around the pass, but that purges a decent amount of um, filament to get it ready for use because even the filament in the Bowden tube is going to absorb moisture. So you need to keep that in mind. Now, the, the, the final thing I will mention is blockages. I had a jam with the nylon filament in the spool, uh, which I didn't mention in that part, uh, which basically jammed up the extruder, cleared that and it worked well afterwards. It didn't have any issues. The Onyx, uh, either my Bowden tube is a little bit tight or I need to fig adjust it a little bit because the Bowden tube was struggling with the onyx filament if it sat in there for a few hours. I think it was swelling in the Bowden tube and then it was binding up in there and it wasn't feeding very good. And that caused a, lo a lot of problems I found if I was starting it again overnight. So you need to purge the line before doing another print or make sure your Bowden tube is like really well worn or it's got enough clearance to feed that onyx after it swells a little bit. Now, one other thing I'll say with the Snapmaker with these new dual extruder setups is I am incredibly impressed with its detection for blockages or not being able to feed. It basically has a function where if this unit pulls back because the extruder is pulling back against a blockage in the line it, it triggers a detection and it shuts down the machine because it's having trouble pulling the filament and it basically pulls up on the whole extruder and triggers the shutdown function it's done that twice now once with the nylon when there was a, the tangle in the spool and with the onyx when it swelled up and it wouldn't feed through the, the tube very impressed with that. I like how these can be removed also. And in the next video, we're going to be changing out these uh, stock nozzles to some hardened nozzles, trying those out and seeing if they will work in this application. I don't know if they will, but it's a separate sort of video. And we'll do a couple of test prints and we'll see how the hardened nozzles affect the print quality with these high-end materials. Mark Forge filament is definitely a worthy prospect on non-Mark Forge machines. It will work on other machines other than this, I can guarantee it. 
This is just what I've tested it in. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.